So on the front, F04, starting out with number eight. Now, obviously there's no points on here, but we drew these in on Thursday. We've got a point right there, a point down there. If I want to find slope with a graph, I've got to use rise over run, all right? If we remember, we always want to start with the leftmost point and work our way to the right by first rising. So if I want to start at this point here, am I going to be rising up or down? Down. down. I'm going to count how many spaces I go down. I'm going to draw my little triangle. Then I'm going to count how many spaces I go over. We rose down one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So my numerator's gonna be negative six because we went down. How many spaces did we run over to the right? Five. There's my slope, negative six over five. But we're not done. We've gotta find our B, right? Which axis do we look towards to find our B? The X axis or the Y axis? The Y axis, right there. I see a point that lands right on that Y axis. Where is that point at? One four. four. So B is equal to four. We've got our M, we've got our B. We know that Y is equal to MX plus B. So this equation is gonna read y is equal to negative 6 over 5x plus 4. Just like that. Perfect. We're going over it right now. We just started. So take it out and get a red pen. Thumbs up. Anyone get that equation there for number 8? Negative 6 over 5 plus 4. If you made any mistake, whether you miscounted your squares, uh, I don't know, got the wrong value for b, make those changes so that you know what to do. Um, when you see it on the test. All right. Go ahead. All right, writing equations on the back. This is probably the easiest way for us to write equations because we're given the M, we're given the B. You guys stay with me. We know that slope is M, Y-intercept is B. So for number 11, we plug in the M, we plug in the B. Y is equal to 1X plus 0. How can we write this a lot cleaner? How can we clean this up? 1X, we don't even need the 1, right? Y equals X, right? We don't need that 1 in front. We don't need that plus zero on the end. All we need to write is y equals x. Now, is this technically wrong? No, this is correct. But you're not gonna see this as a multiple choice option on the test, right? You're, you're gonna see something like this. So we gotta know that this is the same as that. All right, if it was a free response test and you wrote this, full credit, totally right. But we're not gonna see this on the final. All right. Now number 12, my slope now is zero instead of the y-intercept and my b value is three. So y is equal to mx plus b, y is equal to zero x plus three. And how can we clean this one up? What can we write this one as? y equals x plus three, it looks like we have zero x's. Right? When we have one X, we can just write X. But if we have zero X's, what do we write? Y equals three. There's zero X's. Right? Zero times X doesn't matter what we plug in for X, we're going to get zero. So we could just eliminate that altogether. Boom. Y equals three. So these are the little nuances that we have to understand if we want to get these types of questions right on the final. Okay? The slope is zero. All you see is a number. If we graph this, anyone remember what type of line this would be? It starts with an H. Horizontal. It would be completely flat because walking on a flat surface requires zero effort, if we remember. 
All right, we didn't take recap notes on zero and undefined slope, but we do have a whole lesson on it earlier in the year in your notebooks that you should have ready to go on Thursday. All right, so those are our writing equations. All the other ones are pretty straightforward, right? We've got a, a full M, a full B. I just wanted to go over those two in the middle that are a little bit trickier. All right. Now, slope formula. We take a look down at 18. Right? Whenever you see two points like this and we got to find the slope, your brain should automatically go x1, y1, x2, y2. And uh, we're going to plug them in. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. take out all those variables and replace them with some parentheses so I can plug my numbers in. What number should I plug in first? Negative 2. Y2 goes first. Negative 2 minus Y1, which is negative 5. We definitely want to use these parentheses, especially when we're dealing with negative numbers so that we can keep them all contained. We don't get confused. What's my X2? 0 minus x1, negative 4. So I see a double negative on the top, double negative on the bottom. What could we turn those pairs of negative signs into? Plus signs. So on the top, we've got negative 2 plus 5. If we have to use our number line, we can. We start at negative 2, add 5 to the right. Where do we end up? Positive 3, thank you. And on the bottom, hopefully we don't need the number line for this. 0 plus 4 gives me 4. Boom, there's my slope. But again, we're not done. we got to find our B. We know about boy, yo, mama's x. B is equal to y minus mx. Right? We know what m is. We just found it. 3 over 4. I'm going to use my second point here, 0, comma, negative 2, because I like that 0. I know it's going to make my life easier to use a 0 for my x and negative 2 for my y. Okay, I'm going to focus down on this. Let me plug these in. B is equal to negative 2 minus 3 over 4 times 0 y minus m times x what is 3 fourths times 0? Zero? 0 that's why I picked the point with a 0 because it makes my life easier bring down everything else and what's negative 2 minus 0? Negative 2, right? If we take away nothing, we still have negative 2. That's going to be my B. Is there an easier way in this problem that we could have found our B? No, we had to do all that work, plugging in, solving. Well, what is this point right here? 0, comma, negative 2. If we plotted that on our graph, wouldn't it be right there? This point is our y-intercept. We didn't even have to do all this work. When an x value is 0, the number after it is your b. So if we can recognize that, just like in number 15, right, there's my b. Don't have to do that second process. If we can recognize that, we'll save ourselves a little bit of time. But I wanted to go through this to show you that even if you don't recognize this and you worked out Boyo Mama's X like we've learned, you'll still get the right answer for B. All right, so look out for those X values of zero. It'll make your life easier, but you can still get the right answer by solving it out. So we found our M, we found our B, we can plug those in. 
y is equal to 3 over 4x minus 2 is our equation for number 18. Definitely make sure you've written your equations for those four. Yeah, Ross. Say that one more time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so for for number sixteen and seventeen, we don't have an x value of zero, right? So if we look at seventeen real quick. Okay, guys, please stop whispering. People are trying to focus. Thank you. Like if we were looking at seventeen, just real quick, my m that we find one minus negative five six over negative one minus five, negative six, so my m is negative one. I can take either one of these points. I'm gonna go with the second one because the ones are easier. B is equal to y minus m times x, y, m, x, like that, right? m, boom, x, right there, y, out in front, Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Bring down the 1. Bring down the minus. And what's 1 minus 1? 0. So that's my B. Do you see how we did that? Yeah. Perfect. So M is negative 1. B is 0. Y is equal to negative X. There's our answer for number 17 as well. A little bonus answer there. Y is equal to negative one X, but again, we don't need that one in front. We'll call that Y is equal to negative X. All right, good on the slope formula. Hopefully not too bad. Let's take a look at some Skittle eating. Number 20, if you, you guys remember this one on the test we had a couple months ago? Good, I think it was like, it may have been talkies. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You Those can eat 10 talkies talk. a minute. Yes, yeah. The talkie problem. I just changed it to Skittles. So whenever we have a word problem like this, right, word problems can be scary, but we just got to think about this logically. You can eat 10 Skittles per minute. So my X is minutes. In one minute, how many Skittles can I eat? In one minute? 10. If I haven't even started the timer... Right? How many Skittles can I eat? Zero. Zero. So that's where we have to be careful. Right? We don't want to start out by putting 10 and then jump into 20, 30, blah, blah, blah. In this problem, we start out with zero because you can't eat any Skittles in zero minutes. Right? We see that every minute we're adding 10. So we could follow that pattern to get 20, 30, 40, 50 we write the equation y is equal to 10 x don't need a b value because my b value is zero All right my change in x on top is plus one so 10 over one boom there's my equation now the question after this says how many skittles would you be able to eat in one hour which is 60 minutes, right? Now, there's a couple ways we could go about finding this. One of the ways, if you remember, is extending our table. But do we have room to extend my X values out to 60? No, we would need 55 more uh, columns in this table. That's a little much. There's a way easier way to do this. Anyone want to help me figure this out? How can we find out how many Skittles to eat in 60 minutes? Add a zero? Why just add a zero? Ten. Yeah, exactly. What do we do? Like, what are we actually doing though? Like, I, I you guys are right. I understand your logic, but like, what if I said, um, you know, what if our slope was fifteen? It wouldn't be that easy to just add a zero. Good, exactly. We take the X value that we're given, right? Minutes is X, 60 minutes, that's my X. And I plug it in. That's what I was looking for, plug it in. 10 Skittles per minute times 60 minutes gives me 600 
Skittles. Hopefully you don't actually go home and try this and eat 600 Skittles in an hour. But at this constant rate, that's where you'd end up an hour into your, you know, Skittles-ness. I don't know. Questions about 20? Okay, I know this is taking a while, guys, but remember, please stay focused so we can talk about this. Okay, 21. You deposit $200 in your savings account at the beginning of the year to save up for a PS5. It's a good start. Almost halfway there. Each month, you put $50 of your allowance into the savings account. Fill out the table. Write the equation. So my X is number of months. My Y is the total amount in savings. After zero months of adding money in, how much is in my account? Zero dollars? Two hundred dollars. Because that's your initial value. Start out by putting in 200, right? Beginning of the year. So there's 200 in the account after one month. How much is in there now? 250. We added $50 from our allowance to the original 200. Now we're at 250. How about two months? How much we got saved? 300. Three months? Four months? Five months? 450. Right? My slope is the change in Y, 50, over the change in X, which is 1. That gives me 50. And wherever there's an X value of 0, my B value is right under it. B is equal to 200. We can write the equation Y is equal to 50X plus 200. This equation is a function for how much we're saving y in terms of how many months we've been saving x so the question is if a ps5 costs 600 dollars, how many months of saving would it take for you to be able to buy it now i saw some people making a very common mistake here and plugging in 600 for x and getting some crazy long number but what does x represent in this problem the number of months that's what we're trying to find. We don't know how many months it's going to take, but we do know how much we need to have saved in total. So instead of plugging in 600 for X, like we did with the Skittles, let's plug in 600 for Y. 600 equals 50X plus 200. And this is like what we've just been talking about with our equation solving. We've got to get X all by itself. I'm going to subtract 200 from both sides. What's 600 minus 200? 400. What do I do now? Divide both sides by 50. X is equal to 40 divided by 5. Close. 8. Is it 8? What? 8 PS5s? 8 dollars? 8 months. There we go. Anybody find eight months a different way? See some hands go up. Yeah, Saeed, what did you do? I just extended the Expanded your table. Perfect. Let's take a look how that would work. We've got six months, seven months, eight months. We continue that pattern of plus one on the top. We continue that pattern of plus 50 on the bottom. We got 500, 550, 600. That's what we're looking for right there. It took eight months to save $600, but you can see that if we plug it in and solve, we get the same exact answer. So there's always multiple ways to go about getting, getting an answer here. All depends on what you're comfortable with. All right, finally, quick, finish up these two on the back. We want to figure out if something's linear or not. We didn't take recap notes on this, so some of us may have gotten stumped here. We got to do our little arrows from point to point. How do we get from six to four? 
How do we get from 4 to 2? Minus 2. So far, so good. That's constant on the top. How do we get from 1 to 5? Plus 4. How do we get from 5 to 8? Plus 3. That's what we're looking for. When we see a non-constant change, it is not linear. If we do have a constant change, like plus 10, plus 10, minus 5, minus 5, that's going to give us a linear equation or a linear function there. All right. Last but not least, writing an equation from a table. Obviously, bless you. Obviously, we see a table. We're going to do our arrows. Plus 3, plus 3. On the bottom, we've got plus four, plus four. So my M is gonna be the change in Y over the change in X, four over three. Okay, it's our last one, guys. If we wanna find our B, we gotta go backwards. So we'll minus three to get zero, minus four to get zero. Y is equal to four over three X. Good. Make the change in red so you know what to do when the test comes around. And then go ahead and pass up F04 and take your notebooks out for